This is ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Everything's so dry, the trees. It's just, hopefully we get some rain soon. There have been more than 2,100 wildfires in Florida this year with more than 125 still burning tonight. State officials say 170,000 acres have been scorched and it may not be over yet. The state is suffering the worst drought than any other part of the country and May is traditionally one of the driest months of the year. What are officials doing to battle the fires and what can you do to prevent them and protect yourself? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on Florida's wildfire state of emergency coming up. But first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight in Manatee County, where five people were injured, including two firefighters, after a fire at a warehouse grew into a massive five alarm blaze. The fire broke out at the Callahan Tire Warehouse on 12th Street Court East in Bradenton. Thick black smoke could be seen billowing from miles away as hundreds of tires burned inside. For the latest on the situation, we go to ABC 7's Rick Adam, who joins us live from the scene. Rick. Yeah, Alan, this is actually the closest we've been able to get to this fire scene all day long. I'm actually going to move out of the way so you can have a little better look at things. Crews are going to keep a close eye on this tonight. This fire ignited around noontime, and it took many hours to get under control. The thick black smoke could be seen for miles around, and shooting flames were spotted here at Callahan Tires. More than 100 firefighters battled this challenging fire, which forced the evacuation of the surrounding area. We're being told a work Worker and two firefighters suffered minor injuries. Before they even got here, it, it, it caught on fire. It was engulfed in flames, and that was, that was history after that. We do have a situation that's developing because of the runoff of the water with the oils and other chemicals that those tires give off that we got to capture so it doesn't start polluting the uh, stormwater system. So now it's kind of turning into an environmental issue. And it's not known exactly how this fire started, but as soon as we find out that information, we'll certainly pass it along to you. Reporting live from Bradenton this evening, I'm Rick Adams. Alan, back to you. Rick, thank you. Now the Northport, where the city attorney is in big trouble because of eroding trust between him and city commissioners. In a recent email, Mayor Linda Yates recommended Mark Moriarty's contract be terminated. Yates clashed with him in 2015 after he made changes to city ordinances without the consent of the commission. The vice mayor says they shouldn't rush to fire Moriarty. This commission truly needs to tell the city attorney what is it that we are having a problem with, have it in writing and give him a certain amount of time to actually address it. Northport's general services director was also fired recently. Commissioners will discuss Moriarty's future with the city next Tuesday. He declined our request for an interview. For the second time in little more than a year, the president of the organization overseeing Nathan Benderson Park is stepping down. Bob Sullivan, the president of Sanka, is resigning after nine months on the job. He replaced Paul Blackheader, who stepped down just over a year ago following an investigation into a video of a profanity-laced tirade. As for Sullivan, he says it is simply time to retire, and he hopes Sanka's board will find an individual to take the organization in the right direction. This gives them the time. We could sit down go through the board you know, and find out what we're going to be looking for in the new director. And Sullivan, Sullivan plans to be on hand until next February to help with the transition. New developments tonight in the triple murder trial of Andre Avalos. Today, the defense called three doctors to the stand to convince jurors Avalos suffers from a psychological disorder. A radiologist, a psychologist, and neurologist all taking the stand. Attorneys argue a PET scan reveals Avalos has an abnormal brain. Prosecutors questioning the validity of using the scan. A psychologist, psychologist says Avalos has a delusional disorder which drove him to kill his wife, their pastor, and their neighbor back in 2014. He maintained that that was the case, his belief that here's his enemy, she's not respecting him, um, he's feeling like she's not afraid of him, he's not being taken seriously, and basically I think he snapped and lost it. 
Avalos waived his right to testify, closing arguments or tomorrow, then the case will be in the hands of the jury. It is not uncommon to have a run-in with an alligator here in Florida, but it doesn't often happen like this. A Sarasota mother escaped seriously serious injury after her SUV hit a nine-foot alligator on I-75, causing the car to flip multiple times. Troopers say it happened Tuesday night on the northbound lanes of I-75 in Northport. The woman got away with only a bruises and a cut. The gator wasn't so lucky. Law enforcement says crashes involving alligators are rare on our stretch of the interstate. A reminder to drivers, starting Sunday, the new diverging diamond traffic pattern at the University Parkway interchange will go into effect. It will be the first of its kind here in Florida. According to the Florida Department of Transportation, the new pattern not only will reduce conflict points, but reduce crashes as well. Tonight from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m., the parkway westbound will be closed under I-75. Hurricane season is two weeks away, but private insurers will have support from the state if a storm strikes. Raymond James estimates Florida's hurricane cat catastrophe fund will have more than $17 billion available. This is the second year the fund has had more than enough money to pay out claims. If the fund runs out of money, the state could impose a surcharge on insurance policy holders to replenish it. And another reminder, Bob's Hurricane Special is coming up in just a couple of days. And Bob, it's important information. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be live on June 1st, and you'll have a chance to call in with any kind of questions and concerns. We have a little team of experts that will be here to answer your questions. Uh, by the way, the reason why that fund has gone up so high is because we haven't had a lot of storms in the state or the United States over the past decade. You know, it was one of the driest spells we've seen. Uh, and uh, just last year, we had our first two storms in over 10 years. So that fund actually built up. At one point, it was down to about $2 billion, and it was in danger, a very dangerous situation for us here in Florida. You look at this danger. This is a real danger here, the Keech Byram Index. We show this every night, and we can add another county to the red there as it's gone above 650. It's now into Hardy County, just above uh, DeSoto County, just to the east of Manatee County. That's at 663, and Manatee County at 656, and I, mean, I should say Sarasota, and 648 now in Charlotte County. So the high fire danger continues. The drought status, well, that only is expanding now. You can see the heaviest area of extreme drought is in the central Florida near Highlands up into Polk and also Hardy and DeSoto counties, uh, both into that extreme danger and the Florida bird burn ban continues now all across our area with the exception of Hardy and DeSoto counties. The hottest day today on record in the month of May at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. You don't see this very often, 100 degrees are recorded at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport and almost the hottest of all time with the 1971 and 1972 uh, being a little bit hotter, one degree. Uh, things are cooling down just a little bit with a few showers around. You'll notice just a rain showers, not much lightning, but that may be changing tomorrow as we get into a little bit more moisture in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which will allow the possibility of some lightning strikes to occur with the storms. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. And still to come, from bad to worse, Governor Scott declared a wildfire state of emergency last month, and conditions have only gotten drier since then. Some Suncoast residents are feeling the heat, Fighting fires on the edges of their properties will have the details when we return. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. For years, I've told everyone my Craftmatic adjustable bed was the greatest until I got the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has an adjustable pillow feature that's awesome. You're going to want one, too, when you see how little they cost. If you've ever had a bad night's sleep, call and price the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has so much more than other adjustables and still costs up to 50% less. Featuring a rising adjustable pillow rest, bedside power plugs, under bed night lights, and more. Available in all mattress types with optional heat and soothing massage. For as much as half the price of Tempur-Pedic Sleep Number and other adjustables, enjoy temporary relief of low back pain, nighttime heartburn, mild arthritis. Adjust the rising pillow feature to help align your head, neck, and shoulders. See for yourself with our 30-day in-home trial. So call Call it price one today for less, up to 50% less. You get so much more and it still costs less. You got to see how little they cost.
Call 1-800-237-0214. That's 1-800-237-0214. Call 1-800-237-0214. Call now. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. It's Lincoln's summer sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $249 per month or 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. We haven't seen anything like this for years. Florida, and especially the Sun Coast, are a tinderbox because of the lack of rain. Just this week, 3,500 acres burned east of Northport in the Rain Tree Fire, as firefighters from as far away as South Carolina fought the flames. We need to do our part, and Haley Willigus is here with more. Haley. Alan, the Keech Byram Drought Index, which Bob just mentioned, estimates the dryness of the soil and the duff layers, and it represents the number of millimeters of rain needed to saturate the ground. Both Sarasota and Manatee counties are in the mid 600s near the highest end of the spectrum. That puts us at a high risk for wildfires, but there are some things you can do to help protect your home. $6,000 worth of high quality hay literally up in flames. My guys over there started yelling. I looked back and the top had just a small spot burning. By the time I could go 100 yards here back to the barn, the whole thing was engulfed. Paul Manis takes care of the 1,700-acre Rocky Creek Ranch north of Mayaca City. Recently, all of the hay they had harvested for their summer cattle feed spontaneously combusted, which can happen as the result of a chemical reaction within the haystack. Started dragging all the other stuff out of the way that was in danger, our trailers and our buggies and tractors and called my dozer operator and had him come up here and cut some lines and hopefully we could keep it from going spreading in the pasture any further. Manus and his team were able to do that before the fire department arrived and finished the job. Without their quick work in minutes, this hay fire could have turned into a wildfire and spread across the pastures that are extremely dry from months of drought. Only one time I've seen worse than this and that was like seven years ago. This is pretty bad right now. The river's almost completely quit running and it's pretty bad. I mean, it's everything is just extremely dry. We need rain. Since the beginning of the year, the Sun Coast has been at nearly a nine inch rainfall deficit. That has made for a busy time for wildfire mitigation specialist Patrick Mahoney and the staff at the Florida Forest Service office in Bradenton. Spread is 46 extreme, fire danger rating is extreme. I was born and raised here in Manti County and I don't remember it being as dry as it is right now, I don't ever remember Manti County having a burn ban. Avoiding campfires and trash burns are only a couple things you can do to help prevent wildfires and protect your property. Pick up stuff around your home. You don't want pine needles as mulch up, up against your house because if you look at a pine needle, it looks just like a match and it burns just like a match. And so do many palm trees. Check the color of the leaves for signs of stress. When you first seen them turn yellow, this is what happens, and the ember lands in that, and what happens is this breaks off and shoots up in the air, travels, lands, starts another fire. It's all about limiting the amount of flammable vegetation and materials in your home ignition zone. That's the area that extends 100 to 200 feet outside of your house. Mahoney says if you have a wooden fence, put a plastic or ideally a concrete post between it and your home and clear out your gutters and under your porch. If you've got anything like a deck or 
stairs or anything that has open underneath. Make sure all that's cleaned out. Uh, put wire underneath it to block anything from getting up underneath it. You can help protect your property by planting firewise landscaping. That means avoiding certain plants like saw palmetto and juniper and instead choosing less flammable plants like lavender, which actually grows really well in drought conditions. Any debris, anything that's touching your house, get it off your house and you want to have that defensible space where a brush truck can get in the back of it and defend your home. All the ranchers are complaining we need rain. Even taking all possible precautions, Manus knows only Mother Nature can save us from this drought. So you see our pastures, how brown they are in the grass. and I mean, everything's so dry, the trees. It's just, hopefully we get some rain soon. And if there is a fire burning near your home, the Florida Forest Service says to turn on your sprinklers to keep your yard as saturated as possible. But if you start to see some fire trucks in the area, turn off those sprinklers so you don't drain the firefighters water supply. Haley, thank you. And coming up, an update from the front lines from the men in charge of battling wildfires in our area, as well as Bob Harrigan on when the rainy season will begin. Stand by. We are taking it to the trapezoid. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. And I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. With Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-962-4112. That's 1-800-962-4112. Call now, 1-800-962-4112. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline if you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death. You must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Welcome back. Is the worst of the fire season over? In April, Governor Rick Scott issued a state of emergency. Wildfires have burned 250% more acreage during the first three months of the year than the same period last year. Just this week, 3,500 acres east of Northport were burned in the Rain Tree Fire. 66% of Florida is in a drought. Burn bans continue in Sarasota and Manatee counties. When will it start to rain? How much damage has been done? And what can we do to make sure we don't contribute to a dangerous situation? Joining us for more on the wildfire situation is ABC 7 Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan, Wildfire Mitigation Specialist for the Florida Forest Service Patrick Mahoney, and Manatee Area's Forest Supervisor Mark Mike Keegan. And Mike, what is the situation right now? We've been fairly fortunate in this part of the state. It wasn't until this past weekend that we had our first major wildfire. Um, a little over 3,000 3, acres in Northport in Sarasota County. Um, Manatee and the rest of Sarasota 
less than 200 acres up to that point. It's taking a long time for the fires to, to be controlled. Um, weeks, not days at this point and, in time. And Mike, I, I know that your concern is that we, you believe that there may be lightning over the next couple of days. From what we're hearing over the weekend, there's supposed to be quite a bit of lightning coming in. Hopefully that pans out not to be so. Um, so that's our biggest concern for the weekend. And, and Bob, we, we have seen rain the last couple of nights, but has it, it has not been widespread and it has been absent of lightning so far? Yeah, a couple of interesting points uh, this past uh, couple of days is that the, the uh, storms that have built up have been about 20,000 feet in height. That's about as far as they've gotten. And that's a result of some really dry air that's in place in the midst upper levels of the atmosphere. What happens is the storms build and typically tap into that moisture source that's above that 20,000 foot level. And the storms grow to you know, heights of 30, 40,000, even 50,000 feet. And when that happens, that's what generates lightning. But if it stays below that 30,000 foot threshold, you're not going to get much lightning. So that's been kind of saving us over the past three days. But as you alluded to, uh, there's a good chance we'll see lightning with these storms moving in. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as a result of the moisture coming back into play and the storms are going to get bigger uh, as they develop. And they'll be scattered, and that's the, uh, that's the bad thing that we don't mm -hmm. like. We like to see a little bit more widespread action, uh, a gentler rain, and not much lightning, and that's not what we're going to get. We're going to get some serious situations. And, and Mike, we, we, we want the rain, but the lightning, even if it starts raining, the, the area is so dry, I would imagine that, uh, th that even the rain you know, is not going to be sufficient if you have the, the lightning continue. Yes, and even if we do get rain with the storm sometimes a day or two after that initial lightning event, the fire will reignite and, and uh, we'll have to go find it. That's the biggest problem with some of the lightning fires is they're not easily accessible. Most of the human-caused ones occur in more populated areas or near roads. The ones that are caused by lightning are sometimes in the middle of nowhere. All right, we are just getting started, and we will pick up our discussion right after we check on the weather. Stay with us. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything, or nothing at all, surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here, at the Wannabe Inn, on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. Come on in, welcome to our pad. Trust me, folks, you'll eat for a bed. I'm driving so relaxed. And why leave your bunk? It's all behind you, ready to blow your mind. In Batesville, don't be shy. Come and make the scene. Catch the crazy party inside. The hipsters here are gone. And dig, man, they're on to something big. Yeah, they're gonna flip your wig in Batesville. Our discussion of wildfires in Florida continues in a moment, but right now let's get a check on our uh, 
the weather from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, we're taking a look at the, the rain, and we did get a little bit here at Anna Maria webcam, but not enough to help things out. And most of the rain today near the coast and not inland, and it wasn't much. Anna Maria webcam showing every once in a while. You'll see here just after 5 o'clock a sprinkle or two moving through uh, parts of the area and then moving off into the Gulf of Mexico. That's the way it's been today. The east wind has been so strong out of the southeast and east that the sea breeze never got a chance to move inland. So temperatures soared even at the area beaches today. Without that sea breeze, things don't cool off much. And we had a high today at 100 degrees at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. Also had a few showers that worked their way on by there. You'll notice most of the rain has been west of I-75, which is not always the case during the summer months. And we get the afternoon and evening thunderstorms. It's really start to crank up uh, by mid-June. So we still have a long time to go over a uh, month, it looks like, before it really things start to get going. And we start to see those storms on a regular basis. Uh, there it is, the paltry two uh, tenths of an inch there uh, at the Anna Maria Island. Also near Bayshore Gardens, three tenths of an inch, uh, not much at all. And it looks like uh, we'll see just a few showers along the coast this evening. 88 degrees right now, so it hasn't cooled all that much. We have some clouds around the dew point, 68, and the humidity now at 51%. There it is, the high at 100, the uh, normal high at 86 degrees, and the record high 97 set back in 1938. Well, the wind flow out of the east, and will stay out of the east overnight, but you'll notice a little bit of a sea breeze developing by tomorrow afternoon, say 2, 3 o'clock. Those winds will shift out of the west-southwest, which will allow the convergence to set up, and I think there'll be enough moisture in the atmosphere to kick off a few thunderstorms tomorrow and even on into Saturday and Sunday. So that'll, that'll be kind of a tricky day uh, over the weekend once again. We're expecting highs tomorrow, still above average, but I don't think we'll see the 100 or upper 90s tomorrow. We'll see the low 90s as a result of the increased cloud cover. Well, big storms and tornadoes they're dealing with in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas tonight. And you can see this moisture starting to work its way up in our direction from the south and from the Bahamas. But the big story tonight, obviously the tornadoes and tornado watches that are in effect from Kansas all the way down into Texas with tornado warnings on the ground right now in Oklahoma and Kansas. East winds uh, for boaters tomorrow and for this evening. Uh, low tide upcoming 223 and a high tide will be at 859. Sunset will be at 813. Uh, partly cloudy. Isolated storms, low of 71. And then for tomorrow, a good chance for scattered afternoon storms. You'll see that in the seven-day forecast at 40% for scattered afternoon and evening storms on Friday, a little higher on Saturday. We'll be right back after this. Stick around. The color in my garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. They're my savior. My name is Lola Silvestri. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. When I turned 18, something big happened on my birthday. Every comfort that I knew, gone. This is what it feels like to age out of the foster care system in America. And this is the feeling that nearly 30,000 young people experience every year. But it can be better. You and me, working together for success beyond 18. Improve the lives of young people aging out of foster care. Learn more at jimcaseyyouth.org. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. It's no small wonder Anybody loves it all. I just love art that moves me. No smile. 
I mean, really needs me. Whoa. Sunset Fiat of Sarasota presents No Small Wonder, high performance style. Let the art of fiat move you. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing the wildfire state of emergency here in Florida. The, this week, Northport had its worst fire in decades. What's being done to fight these fires? Our guests tonight are Bob Harrigan, Chief Meteorologist at ABC7 News, Patrick Mahoney, wildfire mitigation expert at the Florida Forest Service, and Mike Keegan, Manatee Area Forest Supervisor. Here's one question I've always wondered about. In a, a confined area, how long does it have to rain to put out a fire and to end the probability that a fire would reignite? That really depends on how much organic material is on that site. Um, we're fortunate here in Manatee and Sarasota counties that we've had a very proactive prescribed burning program by all the land managing agencies, the county governments, water management district, uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission, that removes a lot of that accumulated organic material so that when a fire does start there, it's much less intense and it can get put out quicker. But Patrick, the other areas have been more problematic. For instance, the rain tree fire, there hasn't been fire in that area in several years. So the duff layer is very, very thick. And so that's what's taken so long to get that area mopped up because you know there's a so much there's over 3,000 acres to mop up but to go around you know and look to see what it looked like before it was burned what it, we're having to deal with you know you're talking duff layer you know 12 inches in some areas just because of the pine needles and the other organic materials that that's there and the fire gets in there and the only way to put something like that out is just rain Right, and Bob, the, the, the showers that we've had the last couple of days in, in some cases have been heavy but not sustained over a period of time. Right, the problem is is that we're not seeing anything that's uh, widespread at this point. And what we really need, uh, we talk about this as a tropical disturbance of some sort, to come over and kind of give us some showers for a couple of days, you know, instead of uh, just one or two lone storms that we've been seeing pop up here recently. People are getting the wrong impression. Hey, we're into the rainy season. We're not. This is just a little precursor to what's to come down the road. And, and we typically see this each and every uh, year that we go to a couple of days that we'll start to see uh, what looks like the rainy season starting, but it doesn't really get going and cranking until mid June. So this fire problem and fire danger, I think, will last all the way through June. Even though we'll get into the rainy season mid June, it doesn't necessarily mean the fire danger is over. We'll start to see. Uh, some isolated storms developing and this is a big problem I've seen it over the years is that when you get storms developing sometimes you get bolts from the blue and what they what, the, what that is basically is lightning traveling outside the rain area and it usually has the highest amperage it's a positive volt and what I mean by positive volt meaning the temperature of that could be as high as 50,000 degrees and that starts fires instantly when it hits the ground and, and how far away from the rain I mean you could you could be up to 12 to 20 miles away from the rain when these lightning strikes occur and what's interesting to note is now that we have this uh, radar system, this new radar system, uh, the meteorologists even in Tampa are able to detect the first lightning strike that occurs inside a storm from one cloud to another cloud. And once they see that happen, then they know within about 8 to 15 minutes there's going to be starting to have cloud to ground lightning. And that's obviously the, the kind of lightning that we don't want to see. One story, a little a story that I, I remember, I driving home uh, from Fort Myers to uh, Sarasota, uh, one afternoon, there was a storm around, and I saw a lightning flash on I-75 right on the side of the road. And just as that lightning flash occurred, the fire started immediately afterward. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was amazing to see it. And that just shows you how fast that can occur. And a lot of times it happens in remote areas, and you can't get to them, and no one knows about them. So. And some of the rain that we we're receiving in some of the areas down in Northport and some of the other areas is actually not getting to the ground. And it's yeah, raining. yeah, it yeah, sits right on top of the leaf. And exactly. Eventually, yeah. So it's just sitting on top, and it's not being, you know. And, and that yeah. is because what? Because the, the the ground is so dry that it, it uh, the overstory of the woods, Mike. Heavy tree canopy intercepts a lot of that rain, just never makes it to the to the ground where the fire starts. Now you talked about prescribed burns. Have there been enough? Uh, are they done by the right people? Are there people out there maybe doing prescribed burns that that shouldn't be doing them? Um, we've been pretty fortunate in not having a lot of our fires start from escaped prescribed burns. Um, mostly it's the agencies and trained personnel that are doing it. Uh, ranchers 
uh, sometimes do it as private individuals and sometimes they'll hire our agency to conduct the prescribed burns for them. Have been people been pretty cooperative because you know there are a lot of people out there whether they're camping and they want to start a, a fire or uh, you know kids and, and so forth. Has the word gotten out there sufficiently that you are getting reports or fewer reports than in the past uh, in terms of, of incidents like that? Yes, and, and people understand that right now there's a burn ban in place and most of our regular burners that have to get authorizations from us have just stopped calling now. They know that until we get some substantial rain, we're not going to give out authorizations. And, they, and they've burned enough to where they can look out there and go, yeah, no, I'm not doing this, mm -hmm. you know, because they know they just know, how yeah. bad it is. Right. What about in terms of resources? I mean, obviously we reported this week that we had firefighters from as far away as South Carolina here helping us. Do you have enough resources in terms of manpower and money to, to do what needs to be done right now? Yes, um, we're a statewide agency and we shift resources around as needed. We have a lot of crews from North Florida where they are not in a significant drought situation that rotate in and out and help us here. Uh, we have great working relationships with the local fire districts and we work as a team, our agency and the local fire districts uh, to contain these fires. There's a lot of federal aviation resources that are here in the state that are available to us uh, for, for use on these fires. And like the Rain Tree Fire, we had just about all of our resources there. We called Lakeland District, they sent some in. Uh, we ended up with another fire off 31 and we called Fort Myers and they took care of it. They were actually closer to it. And now we have air tankers actually stationed over in Ponte Gorda now. Right. What happens if we get into a situation that other areas of the state are having the same problem at, at the same time? Or is that, does that happen? We have an agreement with the other states, state foresters, that it's a southern compact and that's basically our mutual aid. We went up to Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina late last year you know, with the Gatlinburg fire and the other fires. We helped them out. Now we're calling in saying, okay, we need your help. So they're they're out of fire danger, so they're more than happy to come down and help us out. And that's part of the South Carolina group. And we've had actually tractors from, I think it was been Pensacola to Jacksonville, that, down to Gainesville. Uh, region 1 and Region 2 has come down to help us along with South Carolina. Bob, is it a matter of scientific certainty that we will uh, get rain at some point starting in June? Or could, you know, there are many states that get into prolonged drought situations right. that you, they can't find their, their way out of. You look at uh, global weather patterns sometimes, you know, El Nino, La Nina, they play a role, a factor in that regard. But uh, it looks uh, fairly evident now, even things setting up with the east, uh, east coast with high pressure. Everything seems to be coming along into place. So I would suspect that it's going to happen. There's always that chance that it may not, but, uh, you know, it will be delayed. Hopefully it won't be. Hopefully we'll get an early start on it. No one can tell at this point. Uh, but I can tell you this, that the fire that started in Northport over the weekend, interestingly enough, I was in Venice giving a hurricane seminar. And the winds were fairly strong, and you were talking about it a couple of reports a, a, a few weeks ago, saying how windy it's mm -hmm. been lately. That night, Friday night before, the winds were gusting as high as 50 miles an hour, and that was not even suggested by any of the forecast models. Right. So, I mean, we had, at the time of that fire, I think sustained winds up to 25 miles an hour, gusts as high as 30, and even though the relative humidity was even high at that point, too. So, I mean, it, it, it's not, it, all the factors came into play. There. I think, oh, oh, actually, you only have a few seconds left. Yeah. Quick. It was moving about 200 acres every half hour. Okay, let's take a quick break. And when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, the alt-right and Proud Boys. The Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio charmed us all and crippled the competition. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota at four on Suncoast View. Get ready for some monkeying around. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View, our animal expert, Marsha, is here with primates from Palm Harbor for us to play with. It's Field Trip Friday, and one person's trash is another person's treasure. Plus, a Judy Garland tribute. Julie Roar Academy previews 42nd Street, and we'll celebrate Bo Best's birthday with Snook Haven in the kitchen. Tomorrow at four on Suncoast View. 
Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right, we will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call for your free author submission kit at 800-425-5308. Alfa Romeo got a lot right with the Julia, but the handling alone is sufficient reason to get one. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Florida remains under a state of emergency tonight with more than 125 wildfires actively burning. When will we be able to get the situation under control and can our viewers at home do anything to help? Our guests uh, join us right now for final thoughts. And, and Patrick, I'll start with you. What is the status right now in terms of wildfires in our area? We have six or seven open wildfires in our district, and we would just ask that people be a little bit more tolerant of the amount of smoke that they're putting up. Um, because it's so dry, they're going to smolder for weeks. We don't necessarily have the resources to send and put water on them every single day, but we do monitor them every day. Um, so they're going to put up smoke for a while. The other thing I want people to remember is that even though there's a burn ban, um, outdoor grilling is still allowed with, with uh, gas and charcoal grills. Just be really careful about disposing of those hot charcoals. That was my next question, Patrick. What should homeowners do in terms of reminding them what they, sh they should do around their property if they live in gated communities or in smaller neighborhoods in our area? My biggest thing is make sure your roof and gutters are cleaned out. Uh, the rain tree fire, it was spotting a quarter mile to a half a mile ahead of itself starting new fires. If that would have landed on a home that had debris on there in the roof, the gutters, it would have taken the house down. So get out there, clean off your roof and gutters, make sure limbs are not touching the house to where it's going to, you know, bring the flame to it. And, you know, with the holidays coming up with Memorial Day, anything, anything that produces heat, it doesn't matter what it is, be careful. Bob, short-term forecast. Well, we're calling for showers and thunderstorms, unfortunately, which will cause uh, more fires down the road here until we get into, say, uh, July. Really, I think July is probably the key date, and that's when all the indexes, uh, will, indices will go down uh, and to acceptable levels. So we hope that's the case. All right. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, the alt-right group. Proud Boys. The organization describes itself as a pro-Western men's fraternity fighting globalism and multiculturalism. Earlier this month, members of the group appeared at a sanctuary city protest in Sarasota where they took aggressive action towards other protesters. Here's what some of you are saying about them. Jason Foster writes, be better, be stronger, work together, and hate-filled violent groups have zero power. If they find themselves outnumbered and never have an effect, they will get bored and disperse. Devin Johnson writes, why are you shunning an opposing view? And I never heard a word about provoking violence until now. What I do know is that free speech means free. And Bjorn Storns writes, I don't respect those that would throw away the values that this country is built on for a racist, xenophobic, misogynistic, authoritarian system of government. What do you think about the ongoing wildfire threat in Florida? Join the conversation by visiting our Facebook page 
at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, you can watch past roundtable discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Bob Harrigan is Chief Meteorologist for ABC 7 News. Patrick Mahoney is Wildfire Mitigation Expert at the Florida Forest Service. And Mike Keegan is the Manatee Area Forest Supervisor. When we return, we'll have a final look at your weather, plus a bust for Florida voters. The state Supreme Court is ruling on an effort to expand the use of slot machines. We'll have the details in our primetime headlines. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything or nothing at all, Surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here at the Wannabe Inn on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. Drive into Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota and discover Pig Saver during the Drive and Discover event. Come shop the Suncoast's largest selection of new Jeep Wranglers or stop by today and drive away in a 2017 Jeep Cherokee for just $18,999. And for a limited time, get America's best value, a new Dodge Journey for as little as $15,999. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harris. Bob. Alan, talking about rain, we only had a few brief showers today. No lightning, thankfully. As we alluded to earlier, it looks like we'll have a little bit better chance of seeing that tomorrow as far as thunderstorms go, but basically just showers uh, through this evening scattered about. Most of the action now is offshore. We had a strong east wind today and never allowed that sea breeze to penetrate too far inland. The sea breeze really generates and gets going the last couple of days. It's been set up right here across central Manatee and Sarasota counties. That's where the shower activity kind of developed. But you'll notice today all of it was pretty much west of I-75 pushing off into the Gulf of Mexico uh, where they don't need the rain, obviously, on the Gulf. Uh, but we need it over land. We didn't get much uh, across Manatee County, Sarasota, or Hardy or DeSoto counties today. Just about three-tenths of an inch there at Longbow Key and also lesser amounts to the south. 88 degrees still at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. Venice now a little bit cooler there at the pier at 82 near the water and Bradenton at 86. Bradenton also warmed up to 100 degrees today. That was the high, the, the high temperature, the all-time high for May at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. As far as the winds go, they'll stay out of the east tonight anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour. And then on Friday morning, still out of the east, and about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll start to get a west-southwesterly component, which will allow temperatures still to warm into the low 90s, but I don't think we'll see the record highs tomorrow. There's a chance uh, we could, but I don't think it will be the case because we'll see a little bit more cloud cover around and a little bit better chance for some showers and storms to move in later in the afternoon and evening as a result of some moisture coming up from the Bahamas. Uh, big storms now. That'll be the story here as far as the national weather goes into Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas tonight where there are numerous tornado watches. All the boxes are the watches now. We'll take away those. And these uh, yellow areas that you see right here, orange areas, those are all severe thunderstorm warnings in place. We had numerous tornado warnings. You can see that and uh, confirmed tornadoes that you see right there in the northern Oklahoma, west of Oklahoma City, and down into Texas. I mentioned that moisture plume coming up from the tropics. You can see that working its way into South Florida and into our area tomorrow afternoon and evening. It's not a widespread rain event. There'll be showers and a few thunderstorms with this uh, moving on in as that drier air moves out. Similar conditions expected for Saturday. It's not going to be a washout. 
but a pretty good chance to see a line of showers and storms develop in the afternoon and evening, then head out. Boston, even hot there today, 92 degrees right now. It's 83 in Columbus and a uh, temperature of 35 in Denver. They're getting some heavy snow now into Colorado and into Wyoming and temperatures much warmer in Dallas. Well, uh, for boaters uh, tomorrow, similar to what we had today, east to northeast winds at 15 knots and then switching to uh, the southwest at 5 to 10 knots in the afternoon. The seven day forecast, pretty good chances for some scattered storms anyway. Otherwise, partly cloudy and above average temperatures expected through the weekend. Al will be back with prime time headlines right after this. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received JD Power Awards for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317 Go online or visit a Target store today. You only have one life. Are you gambling with it? One in three adults have high blood pressure. Not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time. Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. Don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash hpb. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Today, the air is perfect. Inside. Expect more from your cooling and heating. Daikin. Now for your primetime headlines. President Trump is reacting to the appointment of the special counsel in the probe into possible collusion between his campaign and Russia. ABC's Maggie Rooley is in Washington with the latest. There's been bipartisan praise for the appointment of a special counsel, with one notable exception. The entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion between certainly myself and my campaign but I can always speak for myself and the Russians, zero. Uh, I think it divides the country. Defending his White House in the face of that major announcement from the Department of Justice, the appointment of former FBI Director Robert Mueller to take over the investigation into Russian election meddling and possible collusion with the Trump campaign. But over on Capitol Hill... If the president has nothing to hide, then he and the Republicans in Congress should welcome independent investigations to remove all doubt of a cover-up. Early and consistent praise for the decision coming from both sides of the aisle. This is an investigation involving Russia, uh, involving another country interfering with our elections. And so the Intelligence Committee, in my opinion, is the best place for that. Even those against a special counsel are still liking the choice. I don't think appointing a special counsel was necessary, uh, but if one was going to be appointed, I think Bob Mueller is an excellent choice. And the man who picked Mueller, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, briefing senators behind closed doors today on his decision to appoint the special counsel and his role in the firing of former FBI Director James Comey. It was a counterintelligence investigation before now. It seems to me now to be considered a criminal investigation. President
President Trump also said today that he'll be announcing a permanent replacement as head of the FBI soon. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, Washington. One person is dead and 19 are injured after a driver crashed into a crowd of people in Times Square. Police say the driver is in custody and had prior arrests for driving under the influence. A section of Midtown Manhattan closed as investigators determine a cause. It seemed like the kind of thing that's been happening in the news. I'm not, I can't say whether or not it was intentional, but it certainly to me seemed like an intentional act. Police say the 26-year-old driver tried to flee after the crash but was captured. Roger Ailes, the man who built Fox News into a ratings powerhouse, is dead at age 77. His family announcing the death this morning. Ailes started Fox News in 1996, building it into a cable news leader appealing to conservative viewers. Ailes resigned from the network in July amid several sexual harassment allegations from former Fox anchor Gretchen Carlson and others. According to the family, Ailes died of complications from a fall at his Palm Beach home. Florida Supreme Court is ruling against allowing the expansion of slot machines. Today, justices ruled against allowing slots at dog and horse tracks. It also strikes down referendums in several counties where voters approved the use of slots. Florida's legislature had considered expanding the use of slot machines during their session, but the deal to expand state gambling failed. There are new developments in the efforts by Florida Fish and Wildlife to minimize human bear encounters. Having decided against holding another bear hunt for at least two years, the FWC is now focusing on non-lethal management. The agency is encouraging more residents in rural and suburban areas to use bear-resistant trash bins. While the bins are expensive, officials want them to become the norm. And over time, um, what we're hoping is the more uh, equipment that's out there, the more folks realize this is working and the counties or the cities can actually incorporate that into their next waste management contract that says, hey, we're in bear country. This is something I expect you to offer us at a reasonable rate. <laughs> FWC received more than 5,000 bear-related calls last year. More than 60% of them involved bears getting into trash cans. June is mating season, and the, that's the time when the state's estimated 4,000 black bears are the most active. The phrase Florida man has become synonymous with odd and unbelievable stories, and this one is no exception. A Florida man is in the hospital tonight after trying to kiss a rattlesnake. Authorities say it happened in the Bostwick area of Putnam County. A friend of the man says he had been drinking while handling an eastern diamondback. When he leaned into the, to the snake as if to kiss it, the snake lunged, biting him on his tongue. The man is in the hospital tonight. It is illegal to keep a rattlesnake in Florida without a license and not the smartest idea to kiss one. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.